I'm Haj Kazuwe Bashil Mbazira, Member of Parliament representing the people of Kawempe South. As you can see, I'm a proud member of the National Interplat Platform. I'm also the self-appointed minister in charge of information, communication, and national guidance. Thank you. Uh, right Honorable Article 82A1 clearly says that there shall be a leader of opposition in the parliament. In the absence of the leader of opposition, Dr. Bed Buanika is able, willing, and ready. Thank I'm a you. member of parliament from Chimanya Kavone Masaka City, and I'm a member of the National Unity Platform. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bedi. Right Honourable Speaker, my name is Gilbert Olanya, Member of Parliament for Kilak South Constituency in Amuru District, and I am the Chairman Public Accounts Committee in charge of local government. And you are most welcome, Right Honourable Speaker. All my colleagues, we welcome you to Acholi sub-region. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I belong to the mighty FDC party. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I'm called Eric Musana Achari. I'm the member of parliament for Buyaga East Constituency, Kagadi District, all the way from Bunyoro subregion. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Nelson Okello. I represent people of Maruji North County in Apart District. I also double as the Vice Chair Lounge. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I am Onekalit Dennis Amere, a member of parliament representing the people of Kitgum Municipality. Thank you. Thank you. Right Honorable Speaker, Anthony Akol is my name, Member of Parliament Kilak North in Amuru District. I am in FDC party. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, and you're welcome to Gulu, Northern Uganda. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm Ranga Jimmy. I represent the people of Njeru Municipality. I am a member of the National Inter Platform Legale, but General Mohos Kainerugaba is my next president. Thank you. Right Honorable Speaker, my name is Richard Lumu Chizito. I represent the humble people of Mitiana South in the Mitiana District. I'm from the Democratic Party. Thank you. We set up camp here in Guru. So the people of Guru have come back to you to show you that I never ended in shame. The signatures were obtained. Thank you. But right now, speaker. Let's have an introduction. Yes. Let's have an introduction. Can I be allowed uh -uh. to raise yeah. proceedings? Let's, let's have an introduction. We are discussing issues regarding northern your region. That will be discussed later. I'm much away, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes, next. But as next. Honorable members, we have an order of business and whatever you want to raise will come at an appropriate time. So for now, I only want introduction. Can I have the next person? Through your guidance, right over speaker. Uh -uh. When Honorable Sechi we want our peace in this debate. Yes, uh, peace.
Uh, the way parliament operates, uh, you cannot have a virtue in the parliament. The substantive lead of opposition, he remained in Kampala. So we, we fought among ourselves that there should be one of us that becomes the acting lead of opposition, and that is Dr. Abed Buanika. In these two days, I will be the acting lead of opposition to represent the opposition side and give our stand as the opposition. We made a mistake for the opposition to claim uh, that not the entire opposition, but our leader, to mobilize people that they should not attend and participate in this regional city. You are aware that this regional sitting focuses on issues of the region. Now, if we are not here, how are they going to participate with us when it comes to our region? They are going to interpret it that we hate them. And how are we going to come back here next year asking them for support? So that was a huge, huge mistake. And there are issues here which we must take home. This city, Guru, is a well-planned city. Wonderful roads, tarmac roads, which were constructed by the USMID project. But in Buganda, a, a, a town called Mukono, the MP of that town, he, she rejected the program of USMID. And now the roads are malam. These are things that we need to change how we do politics in the central. And it is a takeaway, and we wait for that day when these other members of parliament visit our central, and then they can also uh, deliberate on our behalf. Proclamation by the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament of Uganda. Whereas the vision of Parliament of Republic of Uganda is transformed, independent and people-centered parliament, aware that the 98th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, IPU, resolved that members foster a direct contact between parliamentarians and citizens through meeting and discussion at all levels, nationally and internationally. Further aware that the 126th Assembly of IPU reiterated the need to close the link between Parliament and the people under the overall theme of its general debate, parliaments and the people bridging the gap. Cognizant of the fact that there is need to implement the commitment of the 98th and 126th IPU Assembly by bringing Parliament closer to the people. Noting that the role, noting that Rule 17.1 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament provides that Parliament meets on such days and places as the Speaker determines. Now, therefore, in accordance to Rule 17.1 of the Rules of Procedure, of Parliament, I hereby proclaim that, one, that Parliament shall sit in Kaunda grounds in Gulu City on 28th, 29th, 30th of August 2024. Two, Kaunda grounds in Gulu City to be the precincts of parliament for the above mentioned purpose, given under my hand at Parliament House, Kampala, on 7th day of August 2024. Item three, communication from the chair. The right honorable Deputy Speaker, who is about to arrive to join us, and Honorable Members of Parliament, the Leader of the Government Business and the entire front bench, the Leader of Opposition 
and the shadow cabinet ministers. All the leaders present, notably the, res the resident district commissioners and the city commissioners, the chief administrative officers, the district chairpersons, the district internal security officers, the local council leaders, the religious leaders, the representatives of the civil society, and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to this historic sitting of Parliament of Uganda at Kaunda Ground, Gulu City. It is the first time in the post-colonial times that the Parliament of Uganda is sitting outside the capital city of Uganda, and that is in Kampala. In a special way, Please join me in thanking the lovely people of Gulu City for the warm welcome and extraordinary hospitality they have accorded to us while we are here. Thank you so much, the people of Gulu. I would also want, in a special way, to thank the President of Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kagota. Museveni, who endorsed our sitting in Gulu and equally supported us to sit in Gulu. We want to thank him so much and we are forever grateful to him. I want to thank and commend the clerk to Parliament and his staff for ensuring that the success of this sitting is going to be done. And I want to thank you, my members, my staff, your really wonderful staff of parliament. In a very, very special way, I want to thank the members of parliament. You're very grateful. You're very, very, very gracious people. Traveling from Kampala to Gulu, it means a lot. It means you really leaders who love your country. You love Uganda, not Gulu. You love Uganda. All the way from the west, all the way from the east, all the way from central, and you're sitting in Gulu. Thank you so much for coming. Honorable members, the decision to hold parliamentary sitting in Uganda's traditional four regions is a strategy to bridge the gap between parliament and the people. It was a product of an elaborate cost-benefit analysis and attention to specific and varying nature of distinct realities affecting different regions of Uganda. We've always sat in parliament, made decisions, for the country, forgetting that the regions differ from one region to the other. They have distinct issues that need to be handled region by region. Honorable members, contrary to the misinformation by some members and a section of the public, the regional sitting of parliament are budget neutral we are not incurring additional costs. The strategic decision was taken to upgrade the always budgeted for parliamentary outreaches into a fully-fledged house sitting which will deliberate upon matters that are distinct and pertinent to specific regions hosting the sittings. Unlike outreaches, the deliberation during this sitting will culminate in two parliamentary resolutions and will require government action. We have money that is always available for outreaches. 
And in these outreaches, we could only go and invite the leaders of the area and we discuss with the leaders of the areas. But this case we said, instead of calling only the leadership of the area, let's go and have a sitting in that specific region, get issues that are affecting the region, have resolutions, and forward it to executive for action to be taken in a particular area. When you look at the budget of parliament, no money was added for this sitting. So the misinformation, the people who are moving with the misinformation just don't like the northern region. Parliament is not a stationary building. The building in Kampala is not parliament. It is an arm of government that can convene in any part of the country and this is not unique with the legislature. It is also being done with judiciary. And this is prescribed under Article 95.2 of the Constitution that the Speaker shall proclaim at any one time where Parliament should sit. And where Parliament is, is where the Speaker is. And where the Speaker proclaims and that this will be parliament. So this perception of saying parliament must always sit in Kampala is being selfish. The next time we can sit anywhere, we can even proclaim the middle of Kampala Road to be parliament, and we shall sit. A people-centered parliament must be responsive to the needs of the citizens or, or else society will be without effective parliamentary representation. Remember our role as parliament is one representation, legislation, appropriation, and oversight. The 11th parliament right from inception in 2021, vowed to put the people at the center of the legislative process and its decisions. That is why we are taking parliament to the people. We have brought parliament to the people. We don't want people to come to parliament. We have brought it to the people. Legally and procedurally, the regional sittings of parliament are anchored in Article 95.2 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda, 1995, where not, some of us were not even there, but they understood that at one time we would decide to sit in Gulu, sit in Mbarara, Masaka, and it is also prescribed under Rule 17 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, which empowers the Speaker to convene Parliament at such a place and time through a proclamation, which proclamation we have already done. You may recall that at the start of the today's sitting, that proclamation was done, and it has always been done that's why we always sit in Koloro. It is the same legal basis upon which Parliament sits in Koloro under the ceremonial grounds and Kampala Serena Hotel. In any case, Gulu, where we are holding the historic sitting, is part of Uganda. And therefore, no one in their own right mind of state of mind can attempt to deprive the beloved people of northern Uganda the opportunity of the landmark sitting. And I, how I pray that those who are saying they, they boycott do not come to Gulu or to the greater north 
when it is only campaign time. Honorable members, this is the first of the planned four regional sittings that Parliament will host in the financial year. In the second quarter, we shall go to another region. The next sitting will be communicated where we shall be sitting. It can either be in the east, western, or central. At all these regional sittings, Parliament will prioritize matters of urgent and utmost importance to the specific regional, to the specific region where we are hosting the sitting. Honorable members and the local community from northern Uganda will confirm that over the last few weeks, various parliamentary committees have been conducting the oversight role on various areas of service delivery in the region. The relevant committees will present their reports in the course of the next three days. We will discuss and appropriate action will be taken by executive. And to confirm mm -hmm. all this, that's why the president will be here tomorrow to hear the issues that are rising out of northern region. And remember, we've been budgeting for most of these activities. Now we need to understand whether there is value for money in whatever we have been appropriating money for. These reports, alongside with various motions, will be exhaustively deliberated upon by the House and resolutions will be passed and transmitted to the relevant government agencies or departments for action. Pursuant to Rule 220 of the Rules of Procedure, the House will require actions taken on the reports from relevant agencies of government on the status of implementation of the findings from the committees that have been on ground and from what we have discussed in this session. I therefore want to urge members of parliament from across the political divine to actively debate and deliberate on issues that are affecting this region. We can find a solution for the benefit and well-being of people of Greater North. In the spirit of constructive engagement, we encourage all the stakeholders to desist from opposing progressive initiatives aimed at fostering cohesion and growth, and embrace unity and cooperation in furtherance to inclusive decision making and progress. Unity is strength. Let us build Uganda that will work for everybody. You cannot be seen to fight a decision of sitting in an area or in Gulu, Gulu Kaunda grounds, where the Pope was in 1993, Gulu, which is in the history of history of, in the map of political history of Uganda, and you're saying we are boycotting? Well, it has been boycotted, but I see all the members of parliament here. I salute you, members of parliament. Honorable members, over the last few weeks, the motion, the nation has had to contend with some of the difficulty notably the loss of lives and destruction of property at the Kitesi garbage land field in Wakiso district. We also had the demise of Professor Edward Kidu Makubia, a former member of this house 
who represented Katekamo South constituency and also a minister who served with distinct and different portfolios, including Minister of State for Luero Triangle, Minister of Education and Sports, Minister of Constitu Justice and Constitutional Affairs, and then Attorney General and Minister of General Duties or in the office of the Prime Minister. May we rise and observe a moment of silence in the honor of the deceased. Honorable members, 29th August 2024, which is tomorrow, His Excellency the President will grace this sitting and address the House and by extension the region and the nation in line with the Article 101-2 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda. So we should all be here to welcome the President and hear what he has to say about the people of Northern region because we will furnish him with all our findings. And as I said, we should debate with the sanity. We should not play to the gallery. If the issue is, let's go straight to the issue. I know we will want some of our voters to see us outside there that she has, he has expressed the issue. Now let's do it honorably and the issue will be captured. Honorable members, we have a number of members in the gallery, public gallery, and I've always seen you just on TV. We even have the church leaders here. We have the cultural leaders who only see you on TV. I, I wouldn't mind losing 30 minutes for my members just to mention a name and the constituency. Kindly members, mention a name and constituency. Uh, I, I can see they are, they are starting with the leader of opposition. Thank you.